see. Yeah, no worries. So, so nice. the question here is, uh, like, like we've talked about library ecosystem and libraries are all fine and and dandy, but quite often you have a case where, uh, you want to install certain libraries for your code, like you want certain kind of an situation, and the ecosystem is so big, like the whole Python ecosystem. There's like probably hundreds of thousands of packages available for different Python versions and different kinds of like different installations, different dependencies and, and different things. And they are not compatible all at the same time. Like you cannot install Python. Like, I mean, like the whole Python, it's impossible. There's so many, so many packages. You cannot have everything in one, one uh, installation. So that brings to mind that, okay, how do you manage installing multiple things? Uh, at the same time, for different projects, how do you manage that you get get the correct dependencies for a certain project? And there are two major players in this this thing, and they are uh, the Python Packaging Index and Anaconda. So, so they are the major things. So here's a here's a big list of what is the def def like what is the difference between a uh, python packaging index and anaconda i can uh, try to uh, say it in in short form so python packaging index is or package index is this um, community like project that basically provides python packages as these so called wheels like wheels of cheese because everything in python is a monty python joke but uh, but it it provides uh, packages as these like you have python uh, package as one file that you can download from this python packaging index and these are often used in conjunction with these virtual environments like they don't have to be installed into virtual environments but they're quite often used so that you can like have your own small python world where you install only the packages you need from the python uh, pip package and this is very good, like, and it was originally developed for like sharing Python code. So Python code written in Python, but like we talked uh, already, much of the Python code is not written in Python. The, there's underlying layers that are written in C, there might be dependencies. So for example, NumPy uses these uh, BLAS linear algebra libraries. Uh, to to run like the matrix operations and that sort of stuff. So it uses underlying libraries that are not part of Python, and not they are not written in Python. They are written in Fortran and C. And and providing these uh, is a bit of a complicated thing for the uh, for the PP uh, packaging index. So what they do is that they they basically give put everything into into this. Uh, these wheels, and then they provide everything with you, which can result in in like very big installations quite often. And it's it's a bit complicated there. Uh, how how do you share like non Python code? There is a lot of packages that provide that, but it's a bit complicated. Writing these packages is pretty simple. Like you can easily write your own pip packages. We'll talk about it tomorrow. There will be a section session on pack catching your code. So, so writing these is pretty simple. Like, how do you how do you write them, and then you can publish them in the packaging index yourself. And if you're writing Python code that depends on other Python code, so for example, you write your own thing that depends on other Python things or other libraries like NumPy and that sort of thing, it's very easy to share it in in uh, Python packaging index and use pip to install it. So. Pip is the installer installer tool for Python packaging index packages. The other major player is Conda, and Conda is is basically like a solution to the question of okay, like we have so many of these different dependencies or the different packages, and they might not work together. So how do we like how do we make certain that we get like a consistent working environment? And the Anaconda Incorporated, which like developed. It used to be Continuum Analytics, now it's Anaconda Incorporated. They deliver, uh, developed this tool called uh, Conda, which basically is a packaging installer. And then they provide it in this Anaconda installation. So and they provide like a wide bunch of already existing tools 
in one installation, which is this Anaconda installation. Many of you probably already use it, uh, which which contains like it was basically designed for data science people or people in banks or something like that. Like you get one installation that contains a lot of already good stuff, but it has moved beyond that. Like the project has moved beyond that because the community thought that, okay, like we want more packages there. We want more packages. We want more, more things. Like we don't want to be all like all uh, dependent on, on the Anaconda incorporated. So what happened is that Anaconda also provides their own like um, anaconda.org, which is this like packaging index for Conda packages. And you can have your own like channels there. Uh, where you can provide your own packages. And some of these channels are now bigger, like the Conda Forge, which is this open source, open source channel, is a lot bigger than the channels provided by the Anaconda Incorporated. But, but basically, it's a different world. And what Conda does is that it can manage all of these like low-level dependencies as well. So it can install you like compilers and tools and, and, and uh, different kinds of uh, linear algebra libraries and especially when it comes to like CUDA uh, like GPU programming it can install you like the correct correct CUDA toolkits uh, which are these GPU libraries that your code needs so it can try to manage this dependency thing but of course it's very complicated because there's like a huge bunch of these libraries so and, and different said, uh... combinations is it correct to say that Python, uh, uh, the Python package index, PPA index, the things you installed in Python uh, with PIP, is more or less Python packages and Python APIs? You know, Python packages and other C and Fortran and other code that's called from Python. But when you come to Conda, in addition to that, you can also uh, rely on system level libraries. Uh, and also additional tools, for example, the bioinformatics, there are, there are tools like SAM tools. So if you want to uh, mm. analyze something, Conda will also get these tools, which are not Python interfaces, but tools on their own. Uh, yes. In addition to that, in, a Py in PIP, when you install this, some they also uh, distribute the source code. Uh, for example, on Unix system, for Windows and Mac, mostly you have the binaries. Uh, in the PIP, uh, if, the, if the source code is there, and if you are Ubuntu computer, for example, uh, when you download it, uh, the PIP expects that your computer, your 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 term, your your system to have the compiler. But Conta could also bring down the compiler and uh, set up everything. Uh, but mostly, uh, uh, may, maybe all the time, Conda is is pre-compiled binaries. You know, they they're compiled so they're ready to be used. Yes, yes, and of course you can combine these, so you can you can you can install PIP packages in Conda. Like Conda creates its own environments, which are similar to the virtual environments I've already mentioned, but uh, but they're made, managed by Conda. So so this to the whole ecosystem, I would I would quickly mention this uh, over here. There's this kind of like glossary of different terms. So when we talk about Anaconda and Conda, and like you can get headache from just hearing about all of these different terms because there's so many of them. Uh, so so I'll, I'll try to quickly uh, like go through the whole Conda thing, like what are the different partners basically in the ecosystem. So there's the Anaconda Cloud. So this is the, the place where people store the packages. Then there's Conda Forge, which uh, is the largest open source community channel. And, and the Anaconda Cloud also contains like packages by the uh, Anaconda Incorporated, which are called in so-called defaults channel or or base channel and R channel and those kinds of channels, but they are incompatible usually with Conda Forge because Conda Forge is basically like a completely different world in the same same ecosystem. So Anaconda Cloud contains like two worlds: that's this like open source world with Conda Forge, and then there's the default world, which is like pro like curated by the company Anaconda Incorporated. You can use both, but but usually you don't want to mix and match them because you can get problems. Then there's the package managers. So PIP is the package manager for Python packaging index. So if you install from PIP, you install it with PIP usually. But then there's Conda, which is like the package manager for Con Conda environments and, and Anaconda stuff and that sort of things. And, and there's a newer version that we usually recommend to our customers called Mamba, which is like a open source, like Conda is open source project as well, but there's a C++ implementation of this. So, so because like, again, like Conda is written in Python, so it's slow. 
so so when you create this huge environment sometimes it can take like minutes to to figure out how do how do i match these different packages into the same environment and that's why people usually use this mamba which can do it much faster this solving and so so inside it's it's a mess but but it there's like a sat solver inside the conda and it, it tries to figure out the correct packages that you uh you need in the environment because it wants like a working consistent environment you people will just like it will just install stuff <laughs> into the environment um then there's like the the package manager deployments so basically you can get already existing like a good set of packages if you install the anaconda so the anaconda is like a distribution of lots of packages by anaconda incorporated and it's it's free for academic and non-commercial use but for companies it's pays money like the license is uh is not uh, co covered it doesn't cover companies then there's miniconda which is basically it's provided by anaconda incorporated and it uh it uh uses the default channel by default like the anaconda packages it comes they it by default it tries to install them from there and it uh it's uh, like it only contains the conda installer so you can use that as like a starting point if you want to like create your own environments or something you don't have to install the whole anaconda installation then there's um also this mini forge which is like a conda conda uh like a conda forge version of the whole thing where it, it it basically it uses the conda forge by default so it's an open source like version of mini conda basically and it uh it it has mamba as well installed so so like these are some of the words you might hear when you look at web pages and look at installation so so you need to basically choose your what you want to use usually when people are using let's say windows the anaconda navigator is so good that like using that is is a good idea and you can manage packages with that as well like you don't have to use these command line tools or anything you can use the anaconda navigator to manage your package installations if you're using linux you often either maybe get the anaconda installation and just use that and maybe create your own environments if that doesn't have the packages you need or you just take like let's say mini forge and then you use that to create your environments. Uh, but but that's like a more like command line, let's do it uh, like ourselves kind of a way. But so there's different it, ways of installing the packages. Yeah, it's correct to say that regardless of you have installed Anaconda or Miniconda or uh, some package to get Conda, you can use any of the other package managers, uh, you know, uh, Conda. Uh, to install package from any source. For example, yes. you know, Anaconda and Miniconda both could be used to install the same source, yes. but Miniconda is lightweight. Uh, yeah. But when you, uh, I uh, would, wouldn't you recommend that when you distribute the code that need Conda, that you would recommend Miniconda to be the requirements. And then you yeah. provide the package list other than rather than asking the user to install Anaconda and use your mm. package. Yes, yes. Usually it's, it's, it's good mm -hmm. idea to like, provide like the minimal minimal example so so usually when you go to where if you go to a web page and you see like okay pip install this like if you have a library or something what they mean is that like you can install this is the minimum needed for the installation but usually you can have it installed in various other ways you might install it via conda packets or something uh or or you they what they really are saying that okay like create your own environment and then run this pip install command <laughs> because like if you just run the pip install command you usually install to whatever environment you currently have yeah. and that's not a good idea um, so usually yeah. it's a good idea the, to uh choose yeah for, yeah for the for the sake of time shall we show yeah. this uh this best practice yes. you are talking about yes you know, what is so, this environment so, and why do we have to isolate yeah so, so the environments so well, when we're talking about environments, like usually when you start, for example, if you now have started to started Jupyter Lab, you might have started it in in the base environment of your Anaconda installation, or maybe you have installed the environment that we have provided in the in the web page. But the environment, what we mean is that, like when wherever your Python interpreter basically is, like what is your Python interpreter that you're running, uh, that determines like Python based on where it is. It will try to find packages near that. Basically, it it goes one 
folder up and then one folder down and tries to find packages that are present in the system. If the Python is the system Python, it will try to find it from the system libraries. And the, if, it's in a, in, if it's installed into a completely different place, it will try to find packages from there. So what this environment means is that we create a folder, basically. We get some Python there, and then we install packages relat relative to that Python. And then, then they are installed into this own world where they won't interact with others, and we don't have it like loaded all the time, but we can load it per case. Like if we need to do a one kind of a thing with a certain certain packages, we can activate this environment. So we basically go into this world of of this Python, and then we run whatever we want there. And if we are doing a different project, we can activate a different environment. And this is a good idea because like it makes it possible to reproduce like <laughs> your code much more, and you run into less problems because like as as we mentioned previously. There's so many packages, like you cannot get them all working at the same time. So it's better to just have it have like a small world where there's not not that many problems, uh, with that has only the things you need basically, like all of, and that's in the environment, and and this is by the like this I I always start with a new environment whenever there's like an like a problem with Python. You start from scratch and you start building up the environment what you need. And you can create an environment by running some commands yourself. But nowadays, and that is often recommended somewhere, but that is like we will, you will find in the exercise, exercise two, you can run it after the course and, and run the environment yourself. But we don't recommend that way of installing packages in general. So let's jump straight to the correct solution, basically. Or the better solution. So, um, so, so, um, so, what you're saying is that let's say if I want NumPy two, uh, two, one point two four and NumPy two one point two three, both versions of NumPy in my same system. Yeah. Rather than just installing pip install NumPy, that there's a better way to do this, which would yes. help me to reproduce this later. Yes. Yes, and this is by recording the dependencies into this environment file because the problem with like if you, for example, with that is that. Of course, you can like install NumPy some version, and then you realize, okay, that my other code needs another version. So you can basically install the other version, but where was the? Now do you lost the other one? So basically, like either you need to like constantly like reinstall stuff, and and maybe when you do a reinstall, suddenly some dependency of that package gets reinstalled, and and suddenly you are in this mess where like the route you took to to get to the current state of the environment. Is, is depending on what commands you run in what order. And then you cannot reproduce it. Like you cannot anymore, like, like you don't know how you got there. So, so it's usually better to just like create a world where everything is, is uh, like correct at the correct time. And how you do that is that you record the dependencies um, into these, either the requirements txt or environment yum. So Does it you... matter what you call this, uh, Simo? Does it matter what you call these files? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Like, like you can of course record them in. Like, you can name them anything you want. But, but the thing is that if other people are trying to find them, uh, find they they will look at these files and they think that okay, these are the, the files and these are the ones that the the tools will by default try to search for. Uh, if you try to install via people, for example, it will try to find the requirements txt. But but these are like basically like like the conventions. So you should abide by the conventions. Of course, you if you don't, then let the users know or the other people know that okay, my my requirements are in in foobar.txt or something. But but that's yeah, not. But a if good... I if I visit the GitHub page or GitLab mm. page, if the requirement.txt is there, I know what yeah. it is. Yes, so it's yes, better that exactly. you follow this. Yes. 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 Exactly. So you can always look at these and and what the requirements txt. So the requirements txt is meant for the pip installations. So and what it contains is it's just a list of packages. Usually it can have. We'll talk about versioning a bit later, but it's usually just a list of packages, uh, a text file. And when you tell a pip to install an environment, it will just install these packages. Uh, Conda environments are a bit more complicated. So, the, well, not, 
not in a bad way, but but they have more information in them. Uh, and they're co usually called these environment YAML. Um, uh, there's a typo, it's environment.yaml, not environments YAML usually. So, and they contain like the name of the environment usually, uh, what environment you want to use. And then where do you want the packages to come from? I talked about defaults and Condaforge, the channels. So you usually define like, okay, I want the packages for in this case, for example, to come from the defaults channel. So the Anaconda incorporated packages. And then you have a list of dependencies uh, that are the packages. And you can usually convert, like, like you can notice from the syntax that you can easily convert num pip packages, uh, pip requirements txt to environment yaml and other way around. If you just like, uh, if you just take these and 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 put them into requirements txt, you can get basically a pip installation. And you, or, uh, the other way around, if you take these, you can convert them quite easily. So which uh, which version of numpy would this install, Sima? So in this case, because we haven't specified any versions like the both tools they try to get the newest one like if if there's some other package that of course creates like a requirement that okay i need a lower version then you might get that lower version but 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 the, the point is here is that you let the tools do its job <laughs> that like if you don't know what version you need if you don't have a specific need for a version it's usually a good idea to let the tool decide what versions to to get because like if you don't have any specific requirement, it's a good idea to let the solvers figure out what what is compatible and what is needed. Um, so uh, because you mentioned that it is uh, easily interchangeable, so I want to mention mm. my uh, one thing. So if you if you have uh, some packages, depending on the channel you select, there might be different versions. So in pip, it's, it's always the latest version. You know, it, it might pick mm. up. Uh, but depending on the channels you specify, maybe some different versions uh, 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 can can be installed. So you also mm. need to. That's that's why it's important that you specify the channel in your environmental file, rather than depending on one, what defaults you have. Yes, and also in 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 Conda environment, you can also let's say specify the Python version you want to use, and that sort of you can get more complicated with that. But uh, so why is this important to have the requirements txt or requirements? file because it makes it possible to recreate the environment quickly so you can you can recreate the whole thing you can remove it and you can recreate it and you should get the, basically the same kind of a in situation of course in some cases you want to uh, you want to lock down some versions so if you need to reproduce it let's say you run something for your paper and you want the collaborators or reviewers or whoever you want them to be able to reproduce the thing uh, so then you might want to lock down the versions that or pin the versions that you are currently using because you know that those work and in that case uh, you can give these versioning numbers so there's various logic you can give like larger than smaller than that kind of stuff so you can give all kinds of but you can basically lock down certain versions of packages. So let's say you want these exact versions of NumPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, and SciPy. And same with the Conda and with the added, added Python 3.10 here so that you want it with a certain Python version. So uh, as, a, as, a, as a, like a best practice, wouldn't you recommend instead of having this exact versions, you would say that something bigger than this version, but less than this? You know, give us some range being yes, very specific. Yes. Like like the versioning, how it goes in usually in these packages, if the if the people abide by it, is is so called semantic versioning. So so the first version is usually the major release. So so between two major releases, like nothing usually works. So if, like if the number goes from one to two, the first number, it basically means that it's no longer compatible, and you should like do major changes to it. In in verse like the minor version uh, the second number there it basically means that it should be like you they can introduce new features and they can deprecate old features but they usually give like few let's say few versions of leeway where you see these deprecation warnings and that sort of things that like this will go away in next version or something like that so so usually this the second version will basically mean that okay like we are we are doing uh 
we are doing made like some changes between the versions and some things might not work anymore but usually the the main things are the same and the third version is basically a patch version so that shouldn't ever affect like if if they have done their job correctly it should never affect your code it's it's like fixes for bugs and that sort of thing but but that so, means so... that you can usually give like a quite a bit of a leeway for your like you can say that it needs to be version higher than version one, but less than version two or something. Like it needs to be version one, but that's all. Like it or, or version something, uh, some range of versions. So in that, uh, so the all the advice you give, we also need to take care when we distribute packages to stick to those rules because people expect that. Yes, and it's it usually a good idea not to pin yourself too hard to the packages, especially if you're developing something because like. If you pin yourself to a certain version, you're basically locked in time. Like you're at that time moment. And then like the world will move onwards, but you are stuck in that time when you created an environment and when you pin the versions. And in two years, in three years, in four years, most likely nobody else can re recreate that environment anymore. And that's that's a bad thing. So your code will be stuck in that time. So it's usually not a good idea to... Uh, um, do that too often. Yeah, sometimes we we go on uh, sort of bypassing these practices, and let's say if I have created an environment, is it possible to create this file from an existing environment that? Uh, yes. You know, we, uh, I can give to other people. <clears throat> yes. So so in the uh, in this uh, exercise, uh, there's an example how you can how you can uh, freeze an environment. So you can use this Conda env export. Uh, there's also an additional flag here that you can put that's just from history if you want to freeze it based on the commands that you have run previously. And, and you can also run this pip freeze. But what I usually recommend, like if you don't know how you created your environment, I would, I personally start from completely blank slate and then I run the code until I no longer get import errors. Because like if you really don't know what the environment has eaten, it's it's very hard to like, uh, reproduce, <laughs> reproduce it, but you can freeze it uh, if you want to like have a con like an environment for posterity for publication or something like that. So um, I think... should, should we just show one uh, examples while uh, users uh, of our learners could also follow, or what do you, yes, what do you let's, recommend? Let's do an example. So, so this will of course be uh, dependent on. Um, on what what system you're running so so uh like in my case i'm running linux so i can use the terminal for example in jupyter lab if i start well i can start a new one let's say here i'll oops i'll start a new terminal if you're running in a let's say anaconda navigator you can basically uh <laughs> like point it to the environment file and you can uh, let it work on that but um you you can have various different user interfaces, but I, because I'm using the uh, I'm using command line, I I'll, I'll create the environment in this way. So let's say I have an environment YAML. So in this case, it's basically the one over here uh, with the NumPy and Matplotlib and whatever. So let's uh, I'll run I'll run the uh, exercise uh, exercise four. You can probably run it yourself, but because, yeah, uh, or you, you can run it yourself, and I recommend trying it. But uh, because there's differences in environments, it it might be, uh, yeah, complicated if you get it working. But do try if you if you feel like it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create this environment using this conda env create, and then I'm point point to point. Point it to the environment YAML uh, that um, I have. Can you can you show us that file? How do you look, how it look like in your yes um, yes. Documents. So the environment it's just yeah. a dot YAML file. So YAML syntax. So it has this um, list of packages over here. For following, it's it's there on the teaching material. Oh, it's, a, I, it's uh, a same all, as yeah. Yes. I've already have it, so I'm going to remove it. Uh, so you can remove the environments with uh with this command and why so why it's so also very important to like do this environment like 
I usually don't. I, I usually remove all of my environments every like two months or something. And the reason behind is that I'm secure in the knowledge that I can recreate it from the environment files that I have. Like I don't fear losing like okay my 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 uh, system that I have set up is so fragile that I'm I'm worried that I mess it up and now I cannot recreate it anymore. And that's a terrible fear to have as a programmer that you cannot like recreate the environment you already have uh, and that's why it's very important to like create the environment file because then you can let go of that fear <laughs> you don't have to worry about yes. th that anymore yes. and and so, because that's yeah, yeah so so ty typing the installing the one by one would be easier that is the easy way out but the robust way is that what you're doing slightly more yeah. work but you will thank your uh, past self at some yes point. yes yes yeah and and if you want to like, let's say you want to recreate, like you want to add a new package there. What I usually do is that if I run, let's say the install command in the environment myself, or in the documentation, there's also this, you can update the environment based on an updated environment YAML. Uh, you can install new packages there, but I always record it into the environment anyway, because like eventually you mess up the environment anyway like everybody does that like everybody does a wrong installation or something and and then it's uh, it's broken the environment and this is unfortunately the side effect of having so many different choices of libraries but at the same time you can fix it by by having a consistent way of recreating where you where you are and and that is the either the environment yaml or the requirements txt of course the requirements txt is 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 it works very well if you're if you're only using Python packages and stuff in the pip world. But if you're using GPUs, if you're using more complex things, you really you uh, I recommend checking the Conda because it it makes it possible to install much more complex environments uh, where everything works together. So so Simo, uh, it is thinking now. The Conda is thinking and it's solving environment. You see this uh, this timer going yes. on. Uh, yes. So when you when you work on a system uh, um, uh, and when you create environments like this in a requirement file, the waiting time is also less rather than you like add, add more and more to an existing environment because Conda need to figure out the all the matching uh, files. Yes. Um, and, and the other thing is when you work on a system for a long time, uh, it might create a, like a big cache. Uh, people, uh, the the you know packages you don't mm -hmm. want will get accumulated. So in addition to being uh, reproducible, there are so many other benefits uh, mm -hmm. by the uh, by following the uh, procedure that you are doing now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And I'll also mention that like, if you want to share the environment or reproduce it in another system, like usually the environments are not easy to transfer. There are tools to do this, but it's it's very like finicky. And, and, and like usually it's better to just move the environment YAML to a different place and recreate the environments there. Like it's it's just a one text file and it's very easy to copy that and then recreate it in another another place. Uh like instead of like like trying to because the environments like if you're doing work with like deep learning or something, the environments can get to like, I don't know, like four gigabytes. <laughs> like and you don't want to like move four gigabytes when you can move uh move a text file. <laughs> like that's um, that's not no. usually a good idea. So moving around things on different systems, uh, it, it would create issues as well because these are pre-compiled binaries. You don't want to, uh, if you want to move something from Windows to a Unix computer, almost it will never yes. work. But if yes. you can move this environmental yes. file and yeah. recreate it according to their system, according to their target system, mm. and yes. also you could easily version control this environment file because it's text yes. file. You could have Git and uh, other ways of version yeah. controlling yours. You can have multiple snapshots. Yes. So, so yeah, that's an important thing, and and I should mention that, like in the in the Python packaging index, and also in the Conda channels, there's like huge amounts of variety based on like what operating system you're running. So, for example, some packages, like usually the packages are built for Mac OS X, they are built for Windows, they are built for Linux, different variants of Linux, different dependencies, and and you can have like huge amount of like different combinations of of the same package like the same package but it's it's built uh in different ways based on where it's going to be installed 
and and these tools make it possible to uh like install it and of course it, like this is a bit of a demo demo effect but the environment solving takes a long time and this is why the mamba is so popular because it i can show it uh, uh, if we have time i can show it how how long it takes with mamba but i cannot I'm I'm pretty certain it doesn't take this long. But this can also happen in, in Anaconda Navigator, for example. It's it's pretty annoying sometimes that it doesn't produce output that often. Like what's it doing? Like it's trying to solve the environment and yeah, it, it takes a while and uh it doesn't necessarily produce output, so you can think that it's crashed, but yeah, sometimes uh the solving just takes a long time. Let's see if there's any good questions in the chat. Yeah. So I will uh, also try on my terminal. Uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, I think yeah. the one reason could be that you have a lot of um, we could there are ways to clear Conda cache, for example, to, to mm. could let, check less things, and also your base environment where this Jupyter Lab is installed. It yes. might have yes. certain libraries uh, already mm. installed. So what what Conda trying to do is. Uh, it's trying to sort of uh, not to redo things and maybe reuse things and yes. also be compatible. Yeah, and, and uh, also maybe it's because of the share and that sort of things. It's it's uh, there's other things running on my my laptop at this point. So. Uh, yeah, let's see. Are there any good questions? So, so where should it be stored? So, so usually a good idea to, if you're using version control or something, you should usually store the, uh, the environments and requirements in the uh, in in the um, with the code, so that it's easy to reproduce. There's a good question there. Conda update dash dash all. Uh, like this is a good thing to mention that like updating already existing environments can sometimes be really complicated. Like it's well for pip is is less complicated because pip usually just like it just downloads stuff and uh, like it doesn't care necessarily like it just will install them like it doesn't it doesn't look <laughs> like it's it just goes yolo and then it just like installs packages which is good in many cases but but it's it sometimes gets you environment that don't work anymore uh what conda do, does is the complete opposite so it, it tries to make certain that everything works and and if you have like a like basically if you have a, let's say if you have ever been to like a tour or something like a tourist tour or something and and there's one person who slow walks slowly then the whole group needs to walk slowly and that that's basically what can happen with the conda packages that is that there's one package that is basically like i don't want to update like i don't like updating i don't want to like be updated and then it can hold the whole environment back and it can create this kind of a situation where like uh conda conda goes on a tangent and it tries to like create an environment with uh which doesn't uh, want to update anymore so so for all of these situations usually the uh the solution is to is to uh just create a new environment for fun's sake i created a new environment here uh like let's try with mamba like I, i'm running it now from my terminal and it's the same command exact same command but uh, this time I'm r running it from uh, with Mamba, so Mamba is is much faster. So I'm I'm pretty certain that this will like this will finish before this <laughs> gives any output, and it gives more output as well. It it tells uh, where it tries to find the packages and where, what does it download, like what uh, packages and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So now it tells us what, what we are looking for. And soon it should probably give you the answer to what it's, yeah. So now it's already doing the installation. So this is why we usually recommend people to use Mamba when it, they create environments. 
Uh, so it's already done when the conda is still still wondering about, and and this is why this is maybe a good demo on on why why certain tools uh, have been re reinvented, but the user user interface is basically the same. But uh, maybe we should have like, do we have anything for this session? Um. um... Uh, do you want to show something more? Yeah, maybe, maybe, oh, 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 uh, maybe oh, I'll quickly questions. show how to questions. how to activate the environment. So, so when we often often in in places we recommend that you don't necessarily run this conda init. Uh, you can run it. So, so if you see, let's say you have a terminal and you see, let's say this base over here, it means that your conda will is active now. And the Python will always be found from that environment. And that this can cause problems in many systems. Like if you want to, if you don't want to always have it active, like if you have a program that tries to use Python, but suddenly it's, it wants to use the, the Python from the activated conda, that can cause problems. So we usually recommend that people don't run this, um, this uh, conda uh, activate, uh, conda init. But but you can of course run it, and if you run it, you can use this conda activate to activate the environment. Uh, but and now you have a have an environment here. Uh, but if you uh, if you uh, yeah, like usually we don't recommend you run it all the time because then or other programs can that want to use Python as well, they might find this wrong Python instead of the Python that you want to use. So here in this uh, file that you activated, we didn't mention which version of Python we need. So uh, what, I, what I would have been the... I did. So sorry. yeah, so let, we can check what is the version of the Python. So we got 3.12. So in this environment, I didn't specify the... Uh, let's just stop that conda. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't specify what Python to use. Uh, so, yeah, I I just got the newest Python in this case. And if I run which Python, this is like Linux specific command, but you can see that it it uh, shows in, in Python from my newly created environment. So in an environment, does it always include a Python as well? Uh, not necessarily. Even, even... Even if, even you, if, if you don't have it, mention it in your requirement file. Does it always include a Python? No, no. If you're if there's nothing that requires Python, it doesn't always contain Python. So so usually when you create an environment, it might be sometimes good idea to add, let's say, pip and Python always there, so that you always get pip and Python into the environment. Uh, but but sometimes, like most of the most of the time, you install like NumPy or something, and then that has a dependency to Python, so it will bring Python with it. But it's always like this kind of a question of like who are the major players? What are the major packages that you want to get? And those are the ones that bring everybody with them. So they're basically like the Taylor Swift going into a like uh, to a restaurant. Like other people come because <laughs> Taylor Swift is at the restaurant, and and that, that those are the stars of the environment. Let's say PyTorch or something. PyTorch will bring its friends with it. But but like nobody's really caring about the friends; they are caring about the PyTorch, and this is usually how you want to think about the environment. So yes. there's usually the major players that you want to. These are the major things that they want the Conda to focus on. So to sort of sort of investigate that what you said, you know, there might be other packages that um, uh, pandas needed. Is it possible for you to refreeze this uh, environment and show how uh, how that would look like? You know, after creating. Yes, let's 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 run the conda in of export. And and you notice here that I get this like pretty horrible looking environment file uh, where suddenly there's like a huge bunch of stuff here. And and this is basically like the, the exact versions I got. And much of these are are provided are packages that come as dependencies to let's say NumPy, but you don't want to give other people this as as an installation instruction, because uh, well, unless you they want the exact same environment, but.
but usually you don't want it. You want to give them the like the like the the actual one you use. You need yeah, the one you yeah, use. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So in fact, in fact, this will break in most systems because if you see the hash, like the third, yes. like the you have two uh, equal signs, the third hash actually is very unique to the system you are in now. Mm. So there's yeah. very likely that it will break on a different system. Yes. So many of the things here are like, like you can look, read it as as you have a package, then you have a package version, and then you have a specific build of that package. For example, in this case, it's for Python three point twelve. But but yeah, it's it's very specific, and that's why you usually want to give like the broad outline of the environment instead of the like the exact requirements. And so also it's like a recipe. Is... Like you you don't want to give. Like, of course, you can give, like, if you want to create the exact same cake that somebody else has created, you can give the exact grams of how, what flour to get, get an exact brand of the flour, exact date of the flour when it was made, like, exact amount of the flour that is needed. But most of the time, you want to give a generic recipe that says that, okay, just get me flour this amount. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. so it's like similar. You don't want you give, want to give a general recipe. You don't want to give, uh, and and the conda is like the cook that can then manage this. Um, yeah, like yeah. Then uh, then also the, the file you used uh, the environment file. It's also give the uh, others to build upon your package. For example, if they need a let's say PyTorch in their uh, in their program, in addition to what you install, it's easier for them to add PyTorch instead of editing this file. So this is sort of overwhelming yes. and this is not something you want to show. Yes. Uh, and it's also but very should simple. We, should we yes. now go to a break before? Yeah, uh, um, we have two minutes. Um, I think uh, yeah. one minute we can have a look at the questions. Yeah, let's look at the questions quickly and then, then uh, go to a break. So let's see. If you have any any more questions, uh, please go and ask them. Uh, we'll try to answer them. If you want me to share the questions. Yes, maybe. Yeah, that would be great. OK, here we go. You can only see on the stream. Yes. How this goes. I can see the questions on the stream. There's some questions about things like, how do you make the stuff in the environment file? Do you have to do it manually? I think you might have answered that. Mm. Yeah, usually it's a good idea to, to write it yourself. Yeah. Where do you store the environment file? Yeah. Um, so I think we have some... Um, Mamba installation instructions somewhere as well. So we have to find that and place it. Mm. So under under 40, question 44, we'll place it as soon as uh, I find yes. the link uh, for the Mamba installation. Yes. So um, about the, the question, like like uh, I often think of environments, like if you go to, uh, if you go camping or if you go to a hotel, like you, you go on a trip, you you always like pack the usual suspects like you you pack your toothbrush and you pack your shampoo and whatever like this kind of stuff and and that's basically what most of the environments are that you always get some numpies and matplotlibs and scipies and python and beef and like most of the, the stuff is like it it rolls off your tongue <laughs> like you 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 know that okay I will need these anyway like I always want these stuff and then there's all like usually like maybe two, three packages that are the actual like meat of the, the whole thing. And they are the special, uh, like, let's say you need a certain kind of uh, like cl clothing when you go to a, like a trip, you need clothing for warm weather or the, something like that. And, and yes, that's the, um, the actual thing there. Yes, uh, although it is very interesting our discussion, Simo, that we have to stop now. Yeah. Um, on uh, question number 46, I'll, I'll slightly mention something about it. it especially if you see this, uh, if it says access denied when you try to install, especially on shared HPC systems, for example, it's always uh, like that. You are not allowed to modify the central environment. 
And actually, you should not do that. Try to do that. You can use with dash as user, as mentioned, uh, answer. But you should go for this environment, what Simo was promoting. So create isolated silos where you can add things, add, have different versions, and also delete them if they don't want. So don't try to install yes. centrally. Like uh, yes. So so if you if in if you install like Anaconda Navigator or something, usually like in that example, you install it into uh, program files and you install it as root or something like that. And you don't have maybe right access to that folder, and that's a good thing because then you cannot mess mess up the installation. But what you want to do is create a, like a separate realm, separate world, virtual environment or Conda environment where you then install the stuff. Because like if you run, for example, the pip install a Tastas user, it will install into folders where they will always be present. So if if some other environment uses uh, the same Python version, it will find the same packages and then like all hell breaks loose and like suddenly uh, nothing works anymore. Uh, so like you don't, you want to keep the like the, the packages that you want in the environment you want to keep it in a separate like silo like like yeah. Sabri said like separate world uh and and you want to first create the world for it like the environment you want to create the world and you want the packages to that world yes. and, and yes. yeah and uh, simon will take uh, the rest of the questions and the activity and thank you very much for your this great yes. um, introduction i think it will be very useful for most of us richard can you please uh, take a Yes, so yeah. I guess um, we will have a break until 23 past hour. So see you then. Yeah. Bye.